first order of business is the approval of the minutes. We have two sets of minutes, one from the May budget hearing and the other from the May regular meeting. Has anyone, everyone had a chance to look through it? Them? Yes. Yes. The changes that you requested have been incorporated. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> My pleasure. Um, and this was good. Okay. Hi, Lucia. Great. We are just, you're just in time for the um, minutes vote. Good. Okay. I planned it that way. <laughs> <laughs> nice work. Good. Um, can I make a motion to approve these? I can, so I'm going to make a motion to approve the May. First, I'll start with the budget um, hearing minutes. Mm -hmm. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> no. So those minutes have been approved. Next, I will make a motion to approve the May regular board meeting minutes. Um, can I get a second? A second. Corey seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. So minutes have been approved. Um, and we will start with our regular business. And um, there's, I'm just going to say one quick thing, which is that this is Chuck's last meeting. So we're going to make it really, really good. And long? Is that and long. Extra, extra, extra long. Yes, we're going to make it really good. And that's all I'll say about that for now. So no adjourning, in other words. What's that? No, no adjourning. adjourning. No. A midnight adjournment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Francis, please. <laughs> oh, that's me. OK. The, <laughs> yes, uh, the um, WLS board finally approved the uh, strategic plan uh, for, for the next uh, two, three years. Uh, this, this plan has been in the works for over a year. There's uh, a strategic committee that was set up for four uh, trustees uh, with me chairing it, and, and we worked uh, fairly assiduously on that, uh, meeting every other month, uh, and uh, revising and revising and revising until we finally agreed on the final tax, which was uh, discussed by the board um, at the last meeting and, and, and unanimously approved. Uh, it is a very simple document, and I plan to circulate that uh, immediately. I should have done that. Um, it is uh, three parts. The first part is the, uh, the uh, revised mission, vision, and, and uh, mission and vision statements, an, over, an overview statement of what uh, WS is all about, the organizations, the uh, libraries, etc., and the kind of things that you are probably very familiar with. The, uh, the mission uh, statement and the vision statements did not uh, sort of break new ground. We sort of updated what is already in, in the original statement and made it more powerful. Um, the emphasis was on empowering uh, our patrons to use the library and etc. You will see that uh, spelled out in the uh, in the plan. I won't take too much time on that. The uh, plan itself has three uh, uh, elements. Uh, one is the uh, promotion of equity and access. Um, this is uh, this is important. Um, equity ensures that uh, the resources of the library is available to as many people as possible. Access is uh, you know, if there is a resource there. <laughs> and, and you don't you don't have um, access to it, then it's, it's, it's useless. Like having money in the bank, and and and, and, and then you don't know about it. So um, <clears throat> the emphasis will be on that uh, promotion of equity and access to the library resources. And secondly, we will emphasize the importance of expanding community uh, involvement. Uh, including partnership with the member libraries and other organizations uh, in the field. We are not the only uh, uh, game in town. Uh, there are others as well, so we need to work collaboratively with them uh, for the benefit of our, of our patrons. Uh, and that is spelled out uh, uh, quite, quite clearly in the plan. The third is the <laughs> update and constantly improve the infrastructure 
of the of WLS and the libraries, constantly improving. Uh, and during the uh, the committee, I particularly uh, stressed the importance of uh, being prepared for the unexpected, which is on, <laughs> which almost a contradiction in terms. But uh, you know, try to be as well prepared for what may happen, because it may happen. We just had uh, ransomware the, uh, suddenly the other day. Um, and fortunately, the libraries were <clears throat> well, well prepared and we were not affected very much in, in this. Uh, so that, that's what we mean by being prepared and updating our structures and keeping in touch with the other libraries so that we are aware of what is out there. Uh, this may not do the trick completely, but at least it goes a long way, you know. Uh, so update and improve our, our structures constantly. Uh, the third was a recommendation I made that uh, this strategy should be circulated to all the, the libraries and to all the boards and to the legislators and should be given a wide uh, circulation as much as possible and should be discussed. So that, that is, that's going to be done. Um, and within the WLS itself, um, we decided that uh, the executive committee should take charge of ensuring that this is not just a plan, nicely written on paper and we forget about it and shall. No, it should be a living document. And that means that somebody should be on top of it to ensure that uh, the different organizations within uh, WLS and the libraries and others uh, are aware of this plan and are actually taking it in, into account. They are ready to enlarge extent doing that as you have it in, in your plan here. Um, so the, the uh, executive committee will be in charge of monitoring that uh, almost every other month. And also we decided that uh, after two years, there should be a, a review of the document to see what has happened, have we implemented it, what were the challenges, uh, do we need to modify it a little bit and so on, what has changed and what has not changed. So it should be a, a living document that is adjusting itself with the times. You will find it a very interesting document. It's only three pages. <laughs> wow. Uh, and uh, I, will, I will circulate it uh, as, as quickly as I can, probably by tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much. I look forward to reading it. Is that, you have more? Or is that That's good? it. Yeah. That's Thank it. You. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, President's report. So we have a bunch of votes that we will proceed with uh, momentarily. Um, and we have, yep, um, do you want us to start with these? Sure. Sure. Yep. Um, we are required to vote on the um, departing and, I mean, sorry, the incoming and current board members for. Whose terms are expired. Yes, sorry. okay, whose terms are expired, but they wish to remain uh, as part of the foundation board. Um, so those are, um, these are active members, current right? Board members who are seeking reappointment. Great, okay. So um, they are Leslie Demas, Lynn Green, Teresa Leghorn, um, Lori Morrow, Rod Roulette, and Joan Clark. And these are very active board members. You might know them, some or all. Um, so um, I can make a motion here to approve the um, continuation of their terms or the extension of their terms or renewal of their terms, however you wanna say it. Um, can I get a second, please? Second. Lucille seconds, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any, okay, uh, and then no opposed. And then I'm also just gonna make a separate um, board vote for the new, um, newly appointed, right? Are they, they're appointed, they're accepted. Once the board. <coughs> once, once we vote on them. So here's the big moment. Uh, we have Aaron Harrell, Harrell. Do we know how to say that? Yeah, Harrell. Um, very, uh, extensive resume here, impressive. And we have Sharon Weeks, um, who is familiar to me. Um, can I have, uh, I'm gonna make a motion that we approve these incoming board members. Can I get a second? A second. Okay. Uh, court. 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 
All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Great, so congratulations to all continuing and new board members of the New Rochelle Public Library Foundation. That's great. Uh, okay, we're gonna, um, in, your, in your folders is a um, calendar for the 2023-2022-2023 Library Board meeting schedule. Hi, Danielle. Um, if everyone had a chance to look at it, the only kind of funky thing that we did, apart from the usual shifting in May to accommodate um, the budget hearing and the voting, um, is that we move the July meeting up a week or back a, forward a week um, to July 21st. Um, I can make a motion to approve this calendar. Does anyone have any questions or? As long as there's a cake on the 8th of September. Oh, <laughs> noted. All right, cake for Beth. I'm going to write that for Tom. <laughs> Cake. Okay, I wrote that down. Just as as notated. <laughs> Let the minutes reflect. Let the minutes reflect. There is, no, there is notation for September 8th. Can I get, um, I will make a motion to approve the calendar, the meeting schedule for 2022-2023. Can I get a second, please? Second. That seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. So that's when we will see each other monthly. Um, so you can, yeah, you can do that. But um, don't we have two? We can do that when we get to the policy committee. We have other policies. Perfect. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to wait on the next thing I'm going to talk about. But um, good. I'm done for now. Thank you. Um, everybody, my report, uh, just happy to tell you the trend continues. We are seeing um, more and more activity um, as time goes on, which is extremely gratifying for us because there were moments when we were open and it was extremely quiet, but um, more and more people are using our facility, particularly seem to be enjoying our renovated spaces, our new um, study rooms and meeting rooms. Um, our children's area is busy. Our teen area is extraordinarily busy. Um, it's such an interesting phenomena to wander through the library now. And um, the, the vast majority of people are on the younger side. Um, you know, I don't think our, more of our older uh, patrons have um, fully embraced coming back to the library for obvious reasons. But, um, but, it, but we are busier. Um, our uh, preschool programming has, um, was renewed and it was extremely busy. We're starting to do more and more uh, programs for, um, for adults. And of course, we've always done teen programs. The numbers for attendance are going up. Um, and I know Daniel will talk about some exciting upcoming programs that, um, that we can all look forward to as well as our summer reading programs too as well, which is you know imminent. Summer is fortunately just about around the corner. Um, so that's, so it's all happy news there. Our state, our state grant situation, we are on the cusp of hopefully getting approval for two grants that we wrote last August. Um, typically what happens, it, it, it gets approved the, by the WLS board, then it goes to Albany and is vetted by the New York State Library, vetted by the dormitory authority. And once all of that has been cleared, um, typically the uh, New York State Library will announce, but they announce in tandem with uh, the legislative um, delegation in New York, because those folks were most al almost always the people that helped make the construction grants possible. You know, again, this year, not unlike previous years, where um, the governor or the governors uh, lowballed um, us in terms of construction and um, the legislature really fought to up it, which is, makes a big difference. We've seen it in this library. Uh, you can uh, wander through Westchester County, other libraries, and you know this money is really makes a difference in helping us provide um, uh, safe, attractive, relevant uh, facilities. So, so that those two grants should be announced, and of course they are um, 342,674 for the. Um, continued renewal of our facility, third floor this time, and uh, we need a match of 114,224. 
that will be provided by our foundation, hopefully at the upcoming annual meeting. Um, a much smaller grant, but still important, will be um, sent towards the Huguenot Children's Library, $17,813, which will allow us to replace um, the aging um, um, air conditioning units there, the, um, the slant fin narrow ones that have been located in the building since, uh, since the building was reopened in the 90s. So we're excited about that. The match is um, a, a far more modest 59 137, which we'll manage. Um, um, I'm really excited to talk about a grant that um, I, can, I can attribute to the hard work of one of our staff members, and that is Daniel Ogiri, who's our IT head. Um, as you've heard before, we've had, uh, last year we've had great success with E-rate and um, ECF monies. Well, um, once again, we achieved success. Uh, we um, were fully funded for the grants uh, for E-rate and i um, happy to tell you that the total amount we will be getting is 53,000 with our match of pretty modest 13,000. And that will apply to our ongoing discount for internet access, which allowed us to bump up our internet access considerably when we received the E-rate money last year. And it's also for infrastructure money for our um, computers and our servers and other things as well. So at some point um, in the future, I will ask the board to formally um, approve um, a matching grant of that $13,000 for that. And uh, meanwhile, um, you folks remember that uh, last year um, uh, we applied, Daniel applied uh, for uh, the, uh, a grant to allow us to have, let's see, um, 50 hotspots, Wi-Fi units and 100 Chromebooks. They've arrived, we're working through the process. You folks will look at the uh, policy that will allow us to um, allow the community to start borrowing. But um, Daniel has also um, applied for year two for ECF. And so what we're asking there are for monies to allow us to continue to have access to the internet um, for these devices so they obviously can be successful. And we're also looking to um, ask uh, for tablets, um, up to 100 tablets. Um, which we again can loan both in the building and to our community as well. So, so and, and the great thing about ECF is Daniel sort of constructed it that we don't need to match. It's all just money that's coming in. So, um, so it's really good news there. Um, the um, ARPA money that the, um, that the city of New Rochelle received in uh, uh, abundance is something that our organization, along with many other nonprofits, are looking at throughout uh, the city. And uh, we've had a series of conversations. Whitney has been part of them. And we're looking at um, options and opportunities to allow for that money to come to our library. And we, we think we have a good case. Um, ARPA money is really sort of tied to um, um, you know, the pandemic and ways to mitigate it, et cetera, in the future. And we think we have some very good possibilities and from what we're hearing, um, th there's not only a lot of money there, but there may be um, real opportunities for organizations like ours to be successful with what we decide. So we're, hopefully we'll have something to announce. I have a question. Are we applying as a, because we're not a 501c3? We can as a library. We, we can as a library? Okay. I, I double checked with um, Charles. Charles. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, he, so so, I guess my question. But the foundation is also um, a, five, gotcha. is a 501c3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we've been meeting with the foundation and try to figure out, you know, maybe we can do our own, maybe the foundation uh, can do one themselves or with another. Right. Um, More collaboratively. Or right, so, so we're sort of trying to figure out a way that we can get the biggest bang for our buck, get the most money to help our community. Um, the um, fire stopping and safety project still is not underway. We are still exploring um, the issues that relate to that and we're hopefully we'll have something in the near future to, to, to start and I'll be able to share with you. Let's see what else. And of course, as I had said, we are looking at uh, grants for August. Um, Main Library, we would truly like to find ways to mitigate the noisy conditions in the library. When this building was built, it won AIA awards, but there was no um, solutions for the acoustical reverberations that happen in a building like ours with our high ceilings and open atrium spaces. So we're working towards hopefully coming up with um, solutions and we've been in touch with a variety of vendors and we're 
beat up. We have a report that we authored a few years ago that they're using as a springboard to come up with solutions. At HCL, we're certain that we can apply for, um, I, I guess uh, I guess you'd say sort of not, not shelving, but um, storage um, solutions. The building was built in the uh, latter part of the 19th century. Um, when the renovation was done, it was successful, but there wasn't a real sense of what a library needs in terms of really efficient storage. And so we're coming to grips with that and we're hoping to come up with something. And we may be able to add other pieces too. We're just waiting on WLS to circle back to us and hopefully that will happen in the near future. Um, let's see what else. Um, we're, we also have been talking with a, um, um, a family foundation here in the local area about a variety of grants Whitney's involved too and we're not we're where there's one grant that's still outstanding but the grant that we are ready to um, hopefully send out is something that they um, asked us to consider and we're very excited about it and it really ties to the DIY do it yourself and it's really sewing and sewing machines which is becoming really popular and so they have asked us to work up a program that would allow us to have programs, to have an instructor, to loan um, sewing machines to the community. And um, uh, Lisa Itzkowitz has been on it and she's been doing research and we discovered in Brooklyn of all places, there's there they just started a program and actually we're probably gonna circle back and find out a little bit more, but we're excited about this because um, we think both for children, for teens mm -hmm. and adults, we think there's an appetite people would be interested in that and learn, learn more. I have a question. Um, is the idea that people would take sewing machines home or that there'd be like a sewing machine station in the library? It's a good question. <laughs> um, it's a three year grant. And what we've decided to do is to sort of ease into the whole process because it's a lot, a lot to take on. And I think the first year of the grant would be to purchase the machines and to hire an instructor to connect with the community on each sort of age groups. And then the, um, the additional years, once we're sort of settled, we would um, um, be looking towards um, um, maybe having a, like a station, you know, where a machine or machines might be located that people could use. And we're talking about how do we qualify somebody, you know, um, et cetera, working, we're not there yet, but we're working on it. And then the third year, once we're really sort of settled, we would anticipate probably loaning the machines to people in the community. Mm -hmm. And again, it, the idea would be, um, <clears throat> um, we're not saying there'd be a test, but there might be some maybe exposure to a YouTube video that we would make that would help people understand. Their sewing license. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Patch that on, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, so anyway, so it's sort of exciting. <clears throat> we think this is the sort of thing mm -hmm. that's popular. Um, our teen librarian, Rio, who is amazingly talented and energetic, is very excited. She sort of um, um, has some skills there and, um, and, and they've done some, not with the machines, our machines, but WLS has a few machines. They've done a few programs and the teams really enjoyed it. Um, so, so we're excited about that. And that grant might, um, over the course of three years, might total nearly $50,000. Mm -hmm. So a lot of money, but, but we're excited about it and we'll, we'll, we'll see how it all works works out um let's see what else can i, can I add I, i'm more than happy to add my two cents in, in, into this are you a, do you shape. have some yeah yeah no i just wrote down you know there's different there's different components to it that can work um it worked in yonkers the grayston ba bakery is a not-for-profit organization and grayston bakery ended up taking people from uh that were coming out of jail and investing in a bakery and they were selling products in addition to the training component of the behind the scenes of that. So that's something to look into as uh, any especially since we're close to NYC, the fashion industry, how we can be some kind of um, conduit, if you will, and when it comes into the sewing or anything and providing uh, training, you know, or, or, or opportunities to have have kind of that component or as a maker space similar to a um, um, uh, when people rent uh, like uh, offices or whatever the case where yeah 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 where it's just specifically to the fashion and design and actually uh, Westchester Community College has their small division of, of fashion and design and a lot of college students incubators yes yes 
and that can be an opportunity to uh, so there's so many ways that we can tie where um, the sustainability if we're talking about the three years where you're looking forward a year four five six and moving forward how we can incorporate with other entities and business where number one provides opportunity in the social and economic component of people getting careers in this area where there's a place to start that perhaps college may not be something so entry level vocational if you will or looking at it where people can say, hey, come use this space. I'm a fashion designer or whatever, but I don't have the tools and skills mm -hmm. uh, or, or the space to do that. So there's so many different ways that, yeah, yeah. that can take I'd, I'd the love the idea of con kind of connecting to um, like a community college or even a place like FIT, yeah, yeah. you know, where they Absolutely. may be looking for sort of experience where their students might be in a position to want to give back and provide help. I, I'm going to use I, that. I'm going to piggyback on that because Thank you for saying that, Daniel, because mm -hmm. it just sparked all these ideas in my head. And I think we've been talking about this, and I know that this is something that I think there, there are opportunities in New Rochelle where there are synergies that can, we can create between different organizations. So I think about this is, this is, again, one of those opportunities where, depending on what's happening at the school district, where are there connections between the school mm -hmm. district, between the library, between the Boys and Girls mm -hmm. Club? And how do you, and eat maybe, I don't even know, but even between the one. So where are those, those connections that we can make between those organizations that work on youth development and this grant? And how do we extend and leverage this grant mm -hmm. to start creating deeper connections with these organizations so that it becomes an organic and natural process where when they have a program, they are thinking of the library. Absolutely. Whether they're using our space, whether we're, we're collaborating on space, but I think this is another opportunity to think broadly about how we are furthering any connections that we can make. Yeah. I think that's also a clever idea. Yeah. And yeah. Um, yep. I agree with you on that. It's, you know, I, I work with the young adult population, 18 to 24, and in this, this age group that we're working, we call the Opportunity Youth, there's, they're, we get these young people that have not been geared in the right pathway, if you will. And I have this, this I have these two young men and young women who like are graffiti artists, but they're artists on clothing and, and this and that, and they sell their product to their friends. So one of them, a year ago, we pushed them to apply for the Council of the Arts. They were doing the, um, was it the NR, NY, right? The sculpture things, you know, the arts thing. And, 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 and the, the, he submitted it. He came in like I think third place. He wasn't selected because he didn't add his drawings in, in, in color. That was the only reason. But nevertheless, that gave him the experience and opportunities of employment to work for a summer. But I am looking at this where we can look at opportunity and say, hey, you, you can go into your, your graffiti art and design on your clothing that you do for your <coughs> friends and shoes and sneakers. Hey, there's an opportunity to take this or there's a maker space or incubator at the library where you can design and do what what you need to do and and that can trickle on of, of working with boys and girls club and other entities and say hey this program is going to have a fashion show for these youth and young adults that they've created you know and then i mean that working with you it's sexy it's sexy for funders across the board to say oh we're going to support this um and Washington community college has a, pro a program it's on their work their new, one of their new buildings on the se second floor but you're getting these individuals the the essential skills to start in whatever shape, weight, or form. Um, my mother started in this country back in New Rochelle. The powder pads mm -hmm. they used to uh, let women in New Rochelle sew the back of the powder pads, and that was her first job coming to this this country. And I think about that for sewing machine and just every little strip on the on the pad, every little strip and boxes. I can tell you, there's probably a lot of men and women. And, yes, on, yes, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. and that was, a, that was the thing. And I can guarantee you there's right now um, men, women, individuals out there that are probably doing, uh, fixing hems at home and can mm -hmm. open up a business opportunity mm -hmm. by using something like that that we have. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it just opens up so many pathways. Yeah. Like if they have skills already, have them teach right yeah. now they have teaching experience and during vacations if we're loaning our down the road loaning our machines bring them to the boys and girls club for vacation mm -hmm. time classes that you know mm -hmm. kids can do 
or have them come to the library, right? Or love them to the Boys and Girls Club. I mean, right. I, I, remember, I, I remember when Isaac Young used yeah. to have a home and careers course where you learn how to bake or cook and, and sew, <laughs> sew something. And if it wasn't for that class, which unfortunately, my understanding doesn't exist anymore in the middle school ever, if it Domestic wasn't for that science. class, I would not know how to sew a button <laughs> on my suit or, or my pants. Something so simple, these basic skills. Yeah, exactly. And if we can bring it back in, in some way, shape, or form for our participants, not only young and old, but yeah. it'll be so what, what the magic of a sewing machine can do <laughs> at this facility, you know? It's great. In my part of the world, is known as the domestic science. You know, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. Thank okay. you. Thank you for that. Yeah, no, we'll Interesting. share more. The yeah. grant is almost ready to, to go. I think Lisa, Lisa was just making up some final alterations, mostly related to budget, et cetera. But we think we have a good plan. Nice. And um, I'll share more with you. It's exciting. Um, let's see what else. Also exciting is that we had a budget vote on May 21st, and um, it was a big success. Um, one of the new trustees who will be joining us soon is Rihanna Navin, who's in the audience today. And uh, congratulations, we'll be see you, seeing you soon. So, so wonderful. And our budget passed, again, a yeah. really amazing. Um, I think our we had a 76.51% um, uh, level of success of all the votes. 76% of the folks voted in favor of it. Um, and um, what's interesting is that there are 13 elect election districts. All 13 um, were, were carried by the library. They, they voted in a majority for every single district, which in years past has not always been the case. Uh, but i um, happy to announce that we, we did see that um, this year. Um, the other thing that I want to announce that, uh, that I think you folks all know, but uh, we'll announce it here tonight and we're working on a press release, and that is the appointment of a, a assistant library director. Mm -hmm. And you folks all were integral in helping us reach a point where we found somebody that we think was wonderful and uh, the person accepted, and her name is Elizabeth Joseph. And so she will be starting on July 18th, and she comes to us with great experience she uh, she is a native New Yorker. She currently lives in Port Chester. Um, she um, started her career here in the county as a paraprofessional. Decided that she wanted to be a librarian. Went to school, I believe Queens. Got her library degree. Worked at New York Public. Um, had some other jobs here in the county, and then went to the Public Library of Stamford, Connecticut, the Ferguson Library, and um, she was there for 17 years. And um, and she's leaving Stanford after um, all those years to come here. And Elizabeth is a classic success story, somebody who started out as a paraprofessional, a clerk, got her degree, became a librarian one at New York Public, became a librarian one at, um, at the Ferguson Library, and rose through the ranks through her success and hard work. And she, um, let's see, her, her position is currently, or well, soon to, soon to end, uh, is Associate Director of Community Engagement at Ferguson. Mm -hmm. And she has um, a, really a tremendous background. She's been involved in many professional activities. She's very committed to the idea of social, uh, racial, and economic justice, and has worked as such um, in her career at the Ferguson Library to achieve those goals. And it's, you know, it's a small world, the director at the library is an old friend of mine who I hadn't talked to in a while. I never mentioned mm -hmm. that that Elizabeth was a candidate. But when Elizabeth announced, she Alice called me and she said, I should be mad at you because she, <laughs> because Elizabeth is really amazing, but I'm I'm happy that she's going to New Rochelle. I think she'll be a, a big success. And then um, she sent the email to 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 me that she had sent to the staff and Whitney, I shared it with Whitney and it was you know, really one um, saying this was a bittersweet moment because because Elizabeth had done so much at Ferguson, but she appreciated this new job for her. And um, and when I spoke to Alice, she just said, you're getting a really hardworking person, someone who's very committed to being a librarian and making a difference. So it's exciting. So thank you all for being part of that. Let's see, I'm nearly done. Um, um, our continuing ed, um, workshops um, are continuing. 
on, uh, on July 14th. The trustee handbook series is continuing with a Zoom um, June 14th, June 14th. Um, it's PR um, and advocacy from five in the afternoon to 6.30. And um, I can, I had sent it previously, but I can send you that link again if you are so inclined. I understand it's been a very successful series. And on July 7th, um, there is yet another program that they're offering. This, not, this time it's st strictly through the Westchester Library System. And I wanna make sure I get the name of it exactly correct. And it is um, the latest trustee institute and uh, the topic is using the Harwood Institute techniques in your long range strategic planning process. We, we're, we're past that this time, but um, <laughs> maybe not as much of interest as PR and advocacy, but just mm -hmm. wanted to let you know it's out there. Um, let's see what else, almost done folks. Mm -hmm. Um, again, our friends continue to work so hard, small cadre of people, and um, they're open their store on Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Um, small donations are still being accepted. And last but certainly not least, our foundation. Um, um, many of you were at uh, the, the amazing foundation Guardian Gala that was uh, May 12th, and it was a huge success. I believe over 250 people um, and celebrating libraries and celebrating some wonderful people who made a difference um, in, 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 in our community and na nationwide, particularly tied to health and health issues. And um, I believe they made a lot of money, which is exciting for us. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly the particulars yet, but it was, a, it was a big success. And I thank all of you for participating and supporting um, that. Um, I, I will mention that there is a um, annual meeting. I forgot to write the date down. I think it's June 21st or 20th, Monday. meeting begins at 7 p.m. And, and that meeting is typically a lot of fun. People come together, but there is a serious intent. The, um, the annual grant is approved at that meeting. And so, um, you know, I, I, I know that the, the grant monies this year are, are tremendous. It's over $143,000. Um, we did ask for over $200,000. So there's a gap there and um, we'll, we'll, I have um, starting to have a conversation with Chris Sellen, the president, to see if, if we might be able to achieve something over and above that amount. If not, that's fine, but it's worth having that conversation. And that's it. Excellent. You said the annual meeting was on the 20th? Monday. Monday. Mm -hmm. um, Good, thank you, Tom. Yeah, just... Um, Oh, on the trustee training, I forgot to mention when I was doing my briefing that uh, on the first, that was last, last, last week, uh, when is it, June 1st, that we had a trustee gathering, the very first trustee gathering, WLS trustee gathering, um, which was both uh, virtual and, and in person. So we were lucky that, uh, well, honored to be the first to host that, and it was also right in here. Um, I understand that about 77 people were, uh, were present virtually, and then a little over 20 perhaps were, were present uh, e in person. And the subject uh, of the discussion was rethinking public library as, a, uh, as an, an anchor institution. And I'm glad to say that um, the, our members of members of the board participated very effectively in that. The uh, president of the board was one of the panelists, and so was Jack. And, and, and Tom, and it was a, a lively discussion. It's the first time this is being held, to have all the, uh, the library trustees get together. That, we've been discussing that in the, <clears throat> in the board for a while. That is not, it's not nice that all the libraries have their own little boards here and they're isolated when we're all facing the same problems and we're serving the same people. So let them get to know each other and begin to think together and face their common problems together. And that is beginning to catch fire, and I hope uh, it, it, it continues. So this was the first event that we had uh, last last week, and I think the discussion on rethinking the role of public libraries was was, was quite uh, quite quite successful. I think those who are able to, to tune in. Just just for the record, uh, and and just to let everybody know, if you missed it, 
it's not too late. Um, WLS will um, have the Zoom version of yeah. that. We just sent it to them today. Uh -huh. So um, go to their website. And if you folks are uncertain how to find it, I can send you the link mm -hmm. to when, when it's mounted. I sent it to um, uh, Terry and company um, a little earlier this <laughs> afternoon. Yeah. And congratulations that the library budget was approved. Uh, Mount Vernon was not very, <laughs> very successful in that. I was an electoral officer, so I can assure you I didn't force anybody to vote for it. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, congratulations. That's excellent. Yes, we had over 76% of the vote, and, um, and it was a pleasure participating on the panel uh, about libraries as anchor institutions. And um, I agree, I think more events and opportunities for trustees to get together Absolutely. and mind meld and uh, share um, share ideas and brainstorm together and, mm -hmm. um, and it would yeah. be welcome. It was really um, a treat. So thanks to WLS for facilitating that. Um, and Public Works partners were great. Um, yeah. They were yeah. the the in-person facilitators and did a, a mm -hmm. wonderful job as always. Um, do you have a personnel report? I don't. No, okay. Um, then we can move to committee reports. So we can start with the budget committee. Nothing, no, no, nothing to report except hurrah. Uh, we got that passed for this, this cycle. Buildings and grounds. Um, the buildings and grounds committee will be meeting this coming Monday. Um, the goal of that meeting is really to talk about our number one goal in our strategic plan, which is to focus on facilities improvement. So um, that committee will meet and discuss next steps. Um, there's a, a, a few different things brewing, um, talking about, uh, you know, planning for facilities improvement and, um, and you know, thinking imminently and also long term and how do we how do we move forward um and i'm just speaking on behalf of sarah who's not here <laughs> um community relations yes so community relations a lot of things happening for june so i'll give an update of what's happened and then what's to come um some main june highlights so far um as of june 8th um, obviously, the uh, Help and Learning Center, which is our social service hub here. Thank you. Social service um, hub here in New Rochelle, at the New Rochelle Pub Public Library, is uh, very, very strong. Um, all right, yes, it's the same thing, sorry. <clears throat> um, so, job search continues with sessions with Re Re Rebecca Mazine, uh, Tuesdays from 5 to 8. Sessions are in-person and virtual. Uh, the, help, uh, the Help and Learning Center um, sessions are on the rise, um, especially, um, and I can see that trend happening, uh, summer employment opportunities, unemployment benefits, SNAPs, recertification, passport information. Uh, people are eager to travel. Um, so I'm glad to see that there's a, a take on that. Westchester County Healthcare Navigator Elizabeth Blackwell has an in-person on every Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, appointments are available, so they can call the number, 336-0925. Summer Civic Citizenship classes are virtual on Thursdays in June and July um, at 6 p.m. Uh, they can register on an NRPL calendar. NRPL Community Outreach Information Sessions are monthly to continue. Um, Denise has done a fantastic job uh, showing up at the mobile food pantries on Wednesdays. Um, big increase there, uh, giving out library information, free books. Um, uh, there was a successful New Rochelle High School community outreach, re community resource night on May 11th and resulted in positive connections for the library and New Rochelle community. Uh, continual lobbying tabling sessions, non for profit including Project Hope, People USA, Urban Strategies, Head Start Program. <laughs> New York State Healthcare Vendors, MVP, and United Healthcare. Um, continuation of transition to support transition of students who are, are going through the HSC equivalency exam. Um, one of the biggest issues, side notes on, on this report, but one of the biggest issues is New York State lost a task um, exam, which was the, the uh, name for the exam for the GED. GED is actually the name of an exam, not the 
process. It's a high school equivalency diploma. So the GED is that part of New York State. So what happens is all programs, including BOCES, Westchester Community College, everybody who does the testing has to now get rid of their old system and put a new system. So even though people are getting the education, no one has really tested yet. Tests are delayed tremendously because um, people are still getting their staff trained on GED since they were trained for TAS. So um, that's a big process, but I'm glad that uh, uh, classes are still happening here and hopefully people haven't been discouraged from attending because some people may be prepared and have been waiting months since January of this year to take the exam and they have been no slots available, especially in Westchester County. Brooklyn Public Library and other areas have gotten themselves um, up to date, but Westchester and Upper New York State is still having a process. Um, ESL classes continue during the summer. Uh, morning sessions are filling up fast. Um, and there's a New Rochelle resident, got the email today, donating their services as a notary public. And there will be specific days. Uh, will be on Thursdays at 530 on 623, 721, and 818. Um, and then some updates that have been happening. I'm actually hurting. Yeah. Some updates that have been happening. Um, May 12, 1926, mindfulness meditation. Uh, we had about um, 11, 21 registered, but 11 inertial uh, attendees at average uh, attended weekly. Freedom Land USA, May 14, hybrid event. Uh, we had a total of about 50 um, participants, 37 in person, 13 virtual. Uh, Sing Your Heart Out rehearsal began May 16th. Final performance will be July 16th. Um, they had a, uh, the, the film series Helter Skelter was postponed June 4th. Uh, Women's Jazz Assembly happened May 22nd, 45 attendees, cheer yoga two times a week, um, great turnout, 10 to 16 participants. And coming up, Juneteenth, citywide Juneteenth celebration, um, Lincoln Avenue Corridor exhibit, a retrospective Lincoln Avenue Corridor, 1900s to 1960s, happening June 4th to the 24th. And the Juneteenth Kids Art Workshop, June 9th, a trial run for program taking place on June 19th. Um, I believe they were doing a uh, Quilt, right, or something of that nature? Yeah. Gospel choir performance, June 17th, Friday evening. Bakande African Dance Troupe Workshops and Performance on June 20th. Crossword Coach, uh, June 14th. It's virtual, uh, a, a successful and continued uh, interaction solving New York Times crossword puzzle. Uh, small but a loyal following. And summer reading kickoff party, June 25th, in collaboration with the Nurshell Bid. Uh, signing up children, reading challenge, and host family friendly activities uh, right here next door to the Ruby D Park. And July and August, a lot of happenings International Music Festival, uh, Music and Dance Festival, Picnic Party in the Park, July 14th, Meet the President, Virtual, New York Historical Society, uh, The Golden Age of Television, Virtual, Sing Your Heart Out Performance, New York Arts and Arts Community, Lunch and Learn, Pre-Retirement. So a lot happening in the summer. So if you have nothing to do, <laughs> show up to one of these events. Um, and a lot of marketing ha happening. Financial Literacy Workshop, uh, uh, Tom spoke about the sewing grant, uh, the gal was great success, Street Fair, Arts Fest, a lot of things happening and that's it. Thank you. That's amazing. Really fantastic stuff. Just add, yeah. just briefly, um, Dan mentioned that our summer kickoff is um, happening on June 25th from uh, 10 in the morning to 12 noon. We're partnering with um, the bid. Um, and so there will be all kinds of activities um, that will be available in Ruby D Park. So we're urging people to go. And um, not just for children, but um, our intrepid team staff will also be represented there too as well. So if you have a team looking to hopefully get them into the summer reading mode, it might be a place to visit. Um, Tom, I don't know if you know of this. I know it's not something that we run, but it, it, we do have a presence out there at the farmer's market coming back through the Nourishell bid. I haven't heard of anything. I, but. Last, last I heard, no. It was really figure it out okay i mean I put city hall again that's the other one that's the other one on fridays
Right. Um, is that I, one on Thomas Payne? Down to Earth. Down right. to Earth. It's yeah. the, it's, I thought it said it was like suspended at Ruby D until for the 2022 season. That's what I Oh, read. is that how they're but announcing then, it? Well, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's not happening. I, I am not aware that it is happening I because I have been, I've been sort of pursuing it with the executive director, and I think there were some challenges in the past. And um, I, I, I actually urged her, we urged her, if at all possible, to have even, it doesn't even have to be as full blown as it has been, but it's a really a great community event. Um, I'm not sure where it stands right now. Yeah, yeah, that was a lot of fun pre COVID. Anything else? Um, just, I share it, Dan, you all have the team programming. So our teams will be busy if they come to the library. We have activities every day of the week. And um, again, our staff has really got things all organized. And I just urge you, if you have a team that is looking to, you know, has a little spare time on their hands, they might, might want to come here because it's um, not all traditional books, which is great. But, you know, there are um, VR game night, board game night, arts and crafts day, chess for teens, video game tournament. So there are all sorts of things going on and special programs too as well. And uh, I think the library's an interesting, uh, fun, and cool, you know, it's an comfortable place to be. Sorry. That's awesome. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Um, Finance Committee? Oh, we're going to put out next week. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we'll have more to come from Finance Committee at our next meeting. Um, personnel Committee. Nothing to report. Nothing to report. Um, and then we have Policy Committee, and we have a number of policies. We already voted on um, a few things, but policy related. Um, I'm not even on the Policy Committee, but I feel like I am sometimes. Um, we have Chuck and Beth. Do you are you familiar with the policies that we're going to be voting on? Yes. Do you want to announce them? What do you want to say? Do you wanna, I wanna, are we voting tonight? We're going to vote tonight on a oh. few things. We have the conflict of interest policy. We have the fine, the adult fee yes. waiving policy, um, and then there's two other the technology the, take home. The Chromebook and Hotspot loaning program the policy, the borrowing policy. So those were sent out. Yeah. If we feel comfortable, I would say let's move forward on the three that I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And then there's one more, and then and then there's one that we will table for next month. <coughs> so we can start with the conflict of interest policy. Yeah. Conflict of interest policy is fairly boilerplate. It's not, there's nothing, there's nothing crazy about it. Um, did everyone have a chance to review? And feel, do you feel comfortably able to talk about any questions? No, no, do you want to read just a purpose? Or? Yeah, why don't you go ahead? Well, yeah, no, no, yeah. Yeah. read just okay. the yeah. purpose. The purpose of this policy is to protect the interests of the Nershaw Public Library when it is contemplating entering into a transaction or arrangement that might benefit the private interests of a trustee or employee of the NRPL. The National Public Library will not enter into, enter into any such transaction or arrangement unless it is determined by the Board of Trustees to be fair, reasonable, permitted by law, and in the best interest of the National Public Library at the time of such determination. This policy is intended to supplement <clears throat> but not replace any applicable state and federal laws governing conflicts of interest Applicable, <coughs> sorry, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. applicable to not-for-profit charitable organizations and municipalities. Excellent. I have um, a very important post edit. I think we should have a comma after fair, which Beth articulated, but it's yeah. not. <laughs> Good. Where was that, Chuck? The First board of trustees. Board of trustees to be fair, fair reasonable. Fourth sentence. Fourth center. Fourth mm -hmm. line. Comma. Fourth line. I so have a, one question, sure. general question, I guess. Should we be signing off on these? <laughs> so we should sign every year. So we did sign off. We on haven't. We have. The other. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So we will. The each... board. Yes. That's yes. A big deal. Yeah. 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 Ideally, you should be signing conflict of interest. But well, 
nonprofit board trustees should sign every year. Every year. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Annually. And yes. renew it annually and refresh right. your right. your memory about them. So this is something we can circulate annually. Okay. And whatever it was that we signed when we took um, our oath of office, as okay. it were. I yeah, that's into uh signature block, that's all. Yeah, so 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 the the notation that Chuck mentioned and then also a signature block for each trustee to sign and then we would keep these in each of our files. Should we have a copy also? Um, I mean that you keep the copy on file sure. for us. Yes. I mean, if you really want one at home, which I do not, <laughs> I trust, you know, right. I trust that, um, that, that this can be kept on, as, file, right? yeah, on, on our, in yeah. our, in our trustee right. files. Um, so with that, with those changes made, does everyone feel comfortable voting? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, do you, Beth or Chuck want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. Aye. Aye. All opposed? Good. Great. So the conflict of interest policy passes, um, and we will adhere to that. Um, next up is um, <coughs> let's talk about the Chromebook and hotspot borrowing policy. It's also in your materials. Um, Beth or Chuck, can one of you share a little synopsis about what this is? Or Tom, if, if you feel more comfortable. Sure. I'll briefly, um, as you had heard earlier, the library was fortunate enough to receive um, a grant for $87,000 from the ECF, which is a, a federal fund that's sort of a subsidiary of the E-rate fund uh, program. And uh, what we elected to do was to request uh, full funding for uh, 100 Chromebooks and 50 Wi-Fi hotspots with the idea that we would circulate in-house and also um, allow um, residents only to borrow to take home. And so to that end, um, again, I have to credit our staff, namely Denise Link and Daniel O'Jerry, with some support from the circulation <laughs> department and other staff members to put together this policy, which is a policy that um, in many ways um, mirrors other, other organizations that have done the same thing, but um, made it specific to our particular community. Can I ask just one clarifying question? On the, uh, the long-term lending, like on the Chromebook policy, through three-week loan period with no renewals for long-term lending, but somebody could borrow for three weeks, return it, and then check it out Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. You just can't renew. Right. Okay. And you know, uh, to be honest with you, we um, this is all sort of brave new world for us. Yeah. We're exploring, and we may discover that um, that we may want to come back to you and say, let's allow for one or two renewals. But we thought initially, we didn't want to have like all the Chromebooks with like the same people. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> right. We didn't want it monopolized if that were right. to be an issue. So we thought we'd be conservative. Yeah. Um, and not follow what we do for most of our other materials and possibly circle back to you once we have more experience under our belt. So to, to, to Chuck's point, so I can return the device, check it out, mm. do a walkthrough, and then check, <laughs> it, check it in. Check, bring it back and then check it out again. So there's no like a uh, window where you, there's you no can net, check no, it out 48 No dogs, you know, go after you know. <laughs> <laughs> There might be holds. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. right. Yeah. Right. Got it. No, but so it's the, actually it's a it's the a, hold is pretty much the contingent piece that will hold yeah. that. But technically, I can drop it off and yep. put it there well, right. Right. Room right. And check check it back out right. if there's a hold. Daniel can put a, a mustache. And I wonder yeah. if it's to to both Chuck and Daniel's points whether it's good to consider a waiting period, right? Because because, each, because even if someone brings it back and thinks that they'll do exactly that have a walkthrough that 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 takes away the opportunity of somebody else who might try and go online that day to to sure. take it out so is it possible to build into this policy a waiting period you have it for three weeks you wait 24 hours and then right. you can yeah. come back to take it out i i think so um it, again it's a uh, is it trackable though that would be my question like, well, like, yeah. Like, I, I like right. the idea, though. 
You know, I, I, I yeah. can't give you a definitive answer because it's the um, evergreen system, WLS. It would, it would mean for us to program that. Pro and yeah. if, if, if we're allowed I, to I program guess, it. I guess, is it, there, is it, there it, a... Shouldn't there be a serial number that you can't... I mean, it, shouldn't there we'll be something the person, when you're... The person's you got it back in. Not, not, and if it's not, on not the person's equipment. library track, card, then... We can track the equipment. That's not an right. issue. Um, but if it's if a Wi-Fi hotspot is not returned, we can actually close it, shut it down, right. and then it becomes you know, serial and all. right, not valuable. But, I, but it's the the question that you're asking, Lucille, is you know, do we need to um, um, have this cooling off period of 24 mm -hmm. hours, let's say? Um, and I, I I can't give you an answer because that we'd have to circle back to uh, to WLS IT staff mm -hmm. and find out if that's possible. Right. I can, and I guess the other question is, what is the tracking process? Oh, we we have the ability to mm -hmm. track everything, so we can even know where where it is, mm -hmm. and we can we can shut it off mm -hmm. if, if if it's necessary. Well, since this is a new area, why don't you give it a try for yeah. a couple of months and see that from experience, and then then revise uh, the, uh, realistically. Uh, but I, was, I think one thing to think about, and I don't know the loopholes in the in the checkout yeah. check-in yeah. system. Six months, uh, six months, whatever. Yeah. It's, Sorry, Dan. Is if I check it out in person. Does the system it it it, it, um, it tracks it in the system that this device is tracked? Well, what stops me from reserving it or reserving a, a device? Does it does it prompt a device has already been checked? I I, I haven't done that with a device. Does it prompt <coughs> a alert for saying device has already been checked out? Must return current device to place a hold. Right. On a, you, you know what I'm saying? So then I know, so if I reserve it. Reserve well, that's no, a whole nother, that's Well, even different. if you use the same, that, that's a whole other thing. That's, that's a whole other thing. behind it. But right. even if I, if I go and I know I took, I checked it out in person and I'm like, oh, I need this because I have X, Y, and Z. And I go in and I put a hold on it for the day I know that I'm going to return it. I return it and say, oh, I'm going to check something out. Does the device tell me, oh, Device has already been taken out. Mm. No reservation can be or hold can be placed until well, a device. You know, I don't know. What, what I can what I can say is that we do um, for our print and traditional print right. and non print material. If uh, Dan, if you were borrowing um, a particular book mm -hmm. and you loved it and you kept it for three weeks and you wanted to continue to read it, and then another time, your the system will um, um, not allow you to renew it that fourth time. Mm. So the question is. You know, we're talking about just per se one book. Will yeah. the will the system prevent um, a right. patron a device? Right. It, you know, not just one device, but the yeah. other ninety nine yeah. devices. Yeah. yeah. That what we could find out. I mean, so maybe. Why, oh, so you go. Beth. No, no, no. It says three week loan period with no renewals for long term lending, and then in capital letters, no renewals. Right. And as w our explanation was, well, is, be because this is so such a new program, we didn't want to allow renewals until we saw how the community was going to use it. If mm -hmm. there were a lot of people mm -hmm. borrowing these yeah. um, and wanted them, if we allowed people to renew them, that would be denying other people access, which is why we said we wanted to be conservative yeah. and not allow, allow renewals, but um, leave the option open for the staff to recommend to the board to consider yeah changing the borrowing uh, rules based on usage. So I'm going to propose that we add in a potential like a like a 24 hour waiting period for additional um, borrowing, which I is not disagree until you figure out whether it's actually practical. Like, I don't like you got to You have to I'm beta test a fan it. Of, like print, print, print this approach, which, like give it a whirl and see what happens. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cuz like I think you got to make sure you don't want people got to be a way to actually track it in the system without right. creating like a manual Well, I would you also... You can data track it, though, through... See, what you're saying, Daniel, is as an individual, but really we're all barcodes. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. But so that barcode is like a gym membership, right? Right. So you can dial up the sensitivities of that membership depending right. on but, what but, you But want. you know, and I think I really, sometimes systems, <clears throat> when you do something in person versus doing an online checkout, sometimes the system's don't really talk. So that's what I'm saying. If I okay. go to the library and I take out in person the system, on the back end is my profile online that allow me to reserve. Mm -hmm. I don't have to return it because the policy says that there's no renewal. 
But if I go online to reserve a Another hotspot one. in a Chromebook, what will allow me to do that, which I know I'm going to walk into the library and say, here I'm returning the device. Oh, I also have a hold, uh, a reserve hotspot in Chromebook. Do, 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 do you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Like, is, saying. Is there, they should be that, talking to each other. Right, that's right. what I'm saying. Yeah. That's, that's the interesting piece. I want to know if it is okay. talking versus in person. And the version, and online, which right. I know it does for the books, because you could take check it out and then online go in and say, I want to extend my time, whatever. But is it going to do that for the device? Right. Or is there a prompt in saying no renewal, no, no reservation? Because it's not a renewal. Right. We're not renewing. An I'm reserving a new reservation. I'm telling you when I'm going to pick it up. Right. But I already have a checked out device. Right. Is it going to trigger me and flag me and say, sorry, so that would device be, has already been checked right. out must return what you have to right. check and that's out. Gonna, that's that's, that's going to depend on the usage yeah. and, the, and the density of requests. We but we have people's credit card information on file when no. we pull these out. So how do we how, how do we chase them down for money if they well, broke it or something? That's been the the eternal question for mm -hmm. not just you know this technology, but for books, for DVDs. Mm -hmm. Or music CDs. Yeah. What we do is um, we had a we used to have a, a collection agency, and we thought it wasn't financially um, viable. You know, we were almost paying more to have them go after mm -hmm. them, and quite frankly, we didn't like the idea of, of our collection <laughs> agency going after our patrons. It was here when I arrived, and we stayed with it, and we dropped it. What we now do is that we will um, we ourselves create letters. And we'll we'll um, reach out to patrons and say, you know, you, you know, you X, Y, and Z books have not been returned. They're considered lost. Um, you know, please return them, or you will be responsible for the fees. So that's how that's how we do it. But on the Chromebook, you can shut it down. We can't shut it down. So it will become obsolete. But if there's damage to it. If it's damaged. Yes. Well, there's or, there's that, and we have a uh, the policy accounts for um, you know two hundred fifty dollars. Someone doesn't want to pay. Well, you know, it's and then then I mean, in scenarios like that, that's, that's um, you know, I guess the, the, the bottom line is that people can be denied access to using the library to borrow other materials, which is something that we're not thrilled with. But you know, that can be done. I mean, we have a museum pass program that has sort of a fee structure similar to this, and um, even though we've been dropping fines for materials, we do still retain that um, option because they're so valuable and they're and typically very popular. It's just a means to, to, to get them back. So we have to take this program, I think, for a spin and see mm. how it goes and find out where the pitfalls yeah. are. Um, the one question I had um, was related to like if upon return, the Chromebook would need to be serviced in any way or double checked for malware or anything you know if there's like a period where this specific mm -hmm. yeah device can't just come in and then and, and then you know a blank yeah. pass yeah. back out right I, I feel like there should be some kind of we do we yeah. will be looking at them yeah, yeah. Um, do we have the people i mean i know we have well, that's, Daniel, but and we have another a technology person in roy and we just have to see to what level how complicated is it to 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 check right, to check right, these right. things it, i mean i mean we're We'd be paying top dollar if we had somebody with Daniel's salary and skill set to check that, and we're right. sort of hoping that we can, yeah. yeah. Some and this is supposed else. to begin when? Um, actually, once we once this. you vote, okay. then yeah. we would work through the process. We would probably want to make certain that we publicized it too, mm -hmm. you know, just so that people have some sense of it. But we all need to make sure that you know the circulation department. Etc. Right. is all sort of lined up. Is there a way to have a trial period so that we can circle back and we can identify the next board meeting as a next step to report out to, to determine so that there would be a, an addition to this to say, you know, this will, this, it's, it's possible that we will update this policy yeah, yeah, yeah. and and make changes. Or so you, you could pass the policy, whatever you decide on, and say must be reviewed and Two months, right. three months. I think we should yeah, I think it. that's. Yeah, I, I think yeah. the policy is great, yeah. I, and I think we should review yeah. it do the trial run. I just had a question about the equipment piece. I think do we have insurance on the equipment? No. No. So in the event that something does break, does it say? Hey, <laughs> well, well, but I, I will uh, not to make light of this, but this is all a grant money. Okay. That we haven't paid Got for it. anything, and I'm not saying it's. Yeah, 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 it yeah, doesn't yeah, yeah. count yeah. because everything counts. Everything right. that we own, sure. but our investment is, you know. 
our 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 time. Yeah. You know. You know, etc. So there's a typo unless Devo is like a cool term that I'm familiar with. Uh, number <laughs> checkout procedure, the last line of number two. <laughs> Where is that? Which one is it's, this? It's on the D. It's checkout. I think it should be device. Yeah. Check okay. out the yes. Devo. I like yes. the. Yes. I, I, like I like the it cool. Too, but I think it's not correct. See if we have to ask them. Yes. We're not, we're not cool. We're not cool. Right. Um, so that I, I always wonder. Um, maybe I should not. So let's let's. I would propose that we vote to proceed with this program, with this policy, you know, as is pending any other changes that, you know, you need to make. I also want to state that having passed it, I believe if you need, if you see an immediate change that needs to happen, let's revisit it next month and change the policy if it's a, if it's a major change. Um, is next month enough time? I, mean, I don't think so. Is, I, don't I, think would say, I don't think so. I would say let's give it a I quarter think, or yeah. two, so, so six months. No, <laughs> If something yeah, immediately exactly. jumps yeah. out of this so as a flaw. Out of it, out of, I, I would like to give Tom the, the lead, you know, the lead yeah. to, to modify yeah, exactly. it. But yes, I would say let's let's at look least at a it quarter. three months and let's yeah. look at it six months. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you'll know a lot more yeah. about that. Cool. And keep us posted because this is a great program. Yes, and we're excited really about wonderful. it. And we're hoping that we'll get the, um, the uh, I was hoping tonight, but didn't happen, um, our, um, our ES, ECF grant for tablets. Yeah. So that's the next wave, you know, so that our community can have access so to let's, that. Let's move forward with voting. So I can make a motion that we, having taken everything into consideration, that we pass um, this borrowing policy uh, for Chromebooks and hotspots or, or hotspots, Wi Fi or hotspots. Um, and can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, excellent. Thank you all. Thank you. Good, so that's good. Good so, dialogue. Yeah, so we will um, we'll keep, keep our eye on that one. And the last one, um, the one that, we're, that we'd like to vote for <coughs> is the, the fines, waiving of fines. We've talked about this for a, a, about a year. Um, More than a year. Right. Do you want to just share what, sure. uh, just a quick summary? Sure. Um, um, the, um, the library board, um, actually, I think starting in 2017, um, was um, we we as a staff went to the board to ask um, if uh, ask the board if they would relinquish something that's a tradition not just here but in many libraries, which is the um, imposition of fines for the late return of material, whether they be books or non-print material like um, uh, DVDs. Uh, music CDs, audiobooks, et cetera. And um, our, our point of view, which is based on research and which has become um, an important library phenomena or trend, is that um, fines, the idea is that fines are, um, are a tool to um, help persuade people to return material, when in fact the studies have shown that it is not particularly effective. And, and, um, and what what oftentimes happens is that people um, um, return material late and they, um, their fines mount up to such a point they're unable to use the library and borrow material. Um, and um, studies have shown that it oftentimes help is, is ties to uh, communities that are struggling economically and communities of color, which um, it, it, in the library world, feels like we're creating barriers and reasons not to use the library, which we think is totally antithetical to what we're supposed to be doing. And so um, we, we came to the board in 2017 and, and made that request based on the research, based on the fact that in the, in the county, um, there were a number of libraries that were choosing not to uh, um, levy fines, including communities like ours, like Yonkers and White Plains. And so, um, the board at the time said, let's start out um, uh, reducing or uh, eliminating fines for the loan of children's material. And then um, the board revisited and said, let's include um, teen material. And the idea of adult material was put on hold for a while. And then, of course, the pandemic arrived and everything, quite frankly, sort of became sort of a de facto where we were not um, levying fines for the return of adult material. 
And um, certainly the revenue um, implications are negative, and I can't deny that. But I can also say that our revenue stream has been diminishing for quite a long period of time um, because our print material is, uh, and, and non-print material aren't circulating as much. Mm -hmm. And on the opposite hand, um, the, um, our loaning of, of e-books and e-audio books and streaming services have greatly increased. And of course, there's no fines for that material because you can't keep it longer than the system says right. you can. Uh, so, um, so in the meanwhile, while we were all struggling with this pandemic, the uh, phenomena of, of, of eliminating fines became bigger. And during the pandemic, um, all three major New York uh, libraries, um, the New York Public Library, Queens Public Library System, and Brooklyn, all eliminated fines across the board for all populations. And um, in the county, we've seen more libraries eliminate fines. Not all in the county, certainly not, but many more. And so currently we're at a, a place, just to summarize, where they're, um, according to board practice, we're not living fines for children or teens. And because of the pandemic, we haven't reinstituted fines for adults. And so our request is that the board consider allowing us to formally um, eliminate fines for the loan of adult material. Yes. <laughs> uh, all right, then I'll, then I'll jump in. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad we're joining this. I just, I just need to note the irony that we're, we're asking to reduce fines after we just passed a policy where we're going to, we're, we're going to levy fines <laughs> for people. So I'm just, I'm noting, I'm just noting the irony there. But however, that all that said, um, I, I'm glad we're getting to this point formally because the same communities, as you said, who, who need these materials and don't have access to them um, are the ones who are being penalized for keeping them because they need them. And this comes from a girl from the Bronx who still has my copy of Pearl S. Buck's The Good Earth <laughs> because I returned it and they put so many fines on it and I broke down in tears as a middle school student. And so they let me pay the 25 cents that I owed and then told me to keep the book. So, um, and you know, and, and I couldn't pay those fines. So it, it's, 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 it's an important move that is long overdue in many public libraries. I don't necessarily agree, but I, it, isn't it kind of keeping it like an open door for people just to never return them to? because they won't be penalized? You know, you, you, or... I, I, you'd think that that would be the outcome of eliminating fines, the penalty, but we're not finding that to be the case. Our circulation staff mm -hmm. says that not only has the um, situation not worsened, it's arguably better. And I can tell you certainly just from a public relations and a staff point of view, um, the most stressful moments that they would have in the library particularly the circulation staff, were the conversations that they had with patrons, not about lost and paid, because people sort of get that. You know, they had a book, they lost it. They no understand they have to either pay for it or, or replace it, maybe through Amazon. But the conversations they had with people about the fines, and many of the conversations were heartrending. You know, we don't have the money, we can't afford it. I did it, you know, so many years ago, or my mother and father used my card. <clears throat> You know, it just was, it was really some tough conversations and our staff really struggled with it. It was a really challenge, so. This is a ways of, I just want to differentiate between if you've lost the book and you have to, you have to pay to replace it versus if the book is late and you're returning it and there's fines on the, by the day or however, how, how does that work? Yep, there's, there's definitely a difference. We are asking the board to relinquish fines for the late return of material. However, if there are materials, if there are titles that people lose, they are obligated to replace them. That's what it, we're, we're not asking to eliminate lost and paid. So, so these are for late fees of return printed material. Right. Or, or, or DVDs, right. Not the technology. No, not the technology or the museum passes. Gotcha. 
And then my question is, for those individuals that perhaps have, or families that have fees as we speak right now, will they be eliminated or is it moving forward? The fines for children and teens were eliminated long ago. And it was great because a lot of people were able to come back to the library because they didn't have these barriers, they, yeah. you know. Um, but we, we, so the next step is if we formally, are, are, if you give us permission, then we can go to the Westchester Library System and they can wipe the fines for, um, for adults who have fines on their cards. Yeah. Late, late, right? as late, as they return late. the material. Right, mm -hmm. yes. Right. Bring back your lost books. You don't have to pay. <laughs> yeah. You know, like all is forgiven. Right, all is forgiven. But, yeah. but bring Maybe back. we should have a forgiveness week. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> or forgiveness month. I think we should have that because anyway. Because there's fees on the card. I'm just saying it's like. But that's different. I well, I, I, I don't. Technology yeah. though. Technology. Yeah. I think. Yeah. But I get what you're saying yeah. though. I, I, I get it. I think yeah, as long as the fees remain for lost or, or or books, you're like, I'm not giving this back because I love Pearl S. Bach or like whatever, you know. I didn't love it. You I know? just you just had had a, had a book report to <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, I mean, I think let's see what happens. I, I you know, I, I'm in favor of it. I think I think it's long overdue, frankly, and um, and I think it it's more in line with the mission of our library to do it this way. Um, and because you have to pay, if you've lost or, you know, you have to pay to replace it, you're still, you know, you're enforcing and acting in honor of the, the communal nature of libraries. So um, this is, you know, uh, this is, a, it's an honor system and, a, and I think um, it's one of the few institutions that, that really um, embody that. So uh, if people are comfortable, do you have more questions? Can we vote on it? Everyone's ready? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so let's make a motion. I'll make a motion to um, to eliminate fines. Tell me if I'm saying this right, Tom, for adult print and non-print materials, but not e-materials, e right? Just the print and non-print, like DVDs, CDs, right. magazines. Not museum passes not, or the new technology not program. Not museum passes or the new technology, but just the print materials. And the uh, traditional non-print, like? Traditional non-print, like DVDs and CDs. Um, can I get a second? I'll second. OK, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? One? We have, did you get that, Jean? OK, thank you. Um, thank you very much. And we have. Um, Ashley, you wanted to us to vote on uh, the new. No, she's not. She's not starting yet. She's not starting till July. Okay. So which is why um, both Elizabeth and um, Ashley, our new children's librarian, too, mm -hmm. will be starting in July. So we'll come we'll to you in July. Right. Perfect. Um, and then just to put this B in everybody's bonnet, we have an annual report. Um, for public and association libraries that is submitted to the. It's, um, it's submitted uh, to the Westchester Library System as our consortium. Mm -hmm. And then from there, um, um, uh, one of their staff members, Elise Burke, does an amazing job mm -hmm. to deal with all 38, um, all 38 reports with a lot of questions. Um, she will vet it and see if there are any outstanding questions or concerns. And once those have been answered, um, they will, it will then be transmitted to the New York State Library. Um, and, and, and Jean is the person that works very hard on making this happen, and it's not an easy task. Um, the, not the financial information, Jean can snap her fingers and get that done. It's some of the other um, elements that re relate to service. It's harder to always get answers. And, and it's always oftentimes changing. You know, questions will change from year to year. So I would like to wait until next month after WLS has mm -hmm. approved mm -hmm. it, and then to seal the deal but i would ask and urge everybody to look through this it has really interesting like kind of factoids like everyone can refresh on what year your term ends and what yeah. year everybody's term ends can it be um, it's actually a really good i sent it all i did okay yes. yeah it's a really good this um, evening okay it's a really good kind of aggregated document that has has received date on there for the submittal i can't put it through without putting the date Okay. Just so you can, if it shows up there. And Tom so 
told me there's no rush for our vote because we still have to wait for the WLS vote anyway. Right. So if we can get this to I'm just saying, you will see a date that the board voted on it on there because it can't submit into WLS. Got it. So it'll be the July meeting date. date. Right. right. I, think I, I think we put it down in June. I have to look at it because I see. So if you see it, know that it will change. Got it. Understood. I have to um, give you a new address, by the way. I have to give you a new address. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, that's like, there's some information about each of us in here, like fact check that, make sure that it's all up to date and we can update Gene to make sure that we're up to speed. This is my first time admittedly looking through this, so um, I, yeah. I, I, I have some questions, I think. Um, so that's it for policy, special projects, nothing to report. Um, <clears throat> we can go to public discussion. Do we have a public to be heard? Not tonight. Thank you. Okay. Um, look, Chuck. So the time has come. This is a very bittersweet moment. It's actually more bitter than sweet, if I'm being very honest. Um, I'm just going to give my little spiel, and I invite everyone else to say words if they have them. But um, a few years after I came to New Rochelle, I started peeking behind the curtain. And um, I do that usually through volunteering and like understanding what's what. Um, and my, one of my first volunteer efforts was as a guest bartender for, for yep, at Patsy's for the New Rochelle Fund for Educational Excellence where I met nice. Jonathan and started talking to him. Uh, and he kind of glazed over when I started talking urban planning and he's like, you should talk to Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> and so I talked to Chuck and um, that led us to meet in Grand Central for coffee. Do you remember like bright and early, it was yeah. like seven something or eight something. Um, and so what Chuck didn't know then was that he was facilitating my kind of embodiment of a family legacy. My dad was on the library board of the town I grew up in. Um, for 10, more than 10 years, he was its president. And um, what I didn't know at the time was that um, Chuck would become this beacon for me as I learned the ropes here. Um, he is measured and thoughtful and very conscientious and also funny and lighthearted. So he would like catch me spinning off the rails and just make some like silly joke and I'd be like, okay, <laughs> everything's gonna be okay, right? And like, that's me, like, you know, we were making decisions and this was a, a little bit more of a fraught time, if you'll recall, than it is now. It's much more peaceful now. So um, it's just, it's been a pleasure working with you. I will miss working with you. I've already found other ways to work with you as a, my, my call yesterday. Um, <laughs> so, so you can't escape. And, um, and we'll miss you, and we, we have, a, we have a, a, a wonderful, bright future on the board, but, um, in, but, but um, you will, we will feel the, the void of your absence and, um, and excited for your next adventures. Chuck, thank you. I, I would just like to say, Chuck, eight years you served on this board. It might feel longer. Yeah, <laughs> time to yeah I think so. But, um, you know, Chuck, um, I've been an administrator for 30 years, and honestly, you're one of the best uh, board members that I've ever had the pleasure of working with. And you've achieved a status that I don't see very often. Um, you are the proverbial voice of reason. When things are going on, you're just a very thoughtful, smart guy, very calm, and um, you have a calm, you have a perspective. And um, I always, uh, welcomed your point of view, honestly, even though you're leaving now, I can say that without any sense of being a sycophant. And um, you'll be missed, but I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for the years you gave the library and the community, and I you know, wish you well on all those other great things that you'll be doing. Thank you. Yeah, I would like to add that, you know, when I came on board here, I was filling a vacancy, and uh, I believe you were president at the time. Yeah. We yes. Together. Yes. And um, we freshmen together. And then I came into the place where I remember seeing this entire room packed over the whole RXR situation. And I'm sitting here and I'm saying, "Wow, this guy handled this board and the audience beautifully." Like I've I've been part of boards and and, and different things where you know it gets heated, and I've I you've never lost your composure, and I've learned so much from you. 
um, and Deidre as well uh, being here and just, um, you know, and I think you and I came similar on the same time and, and you know, we've, we've, we have big shoes to fill um, with your, with your with departure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I thank you for your leadership, for your guidance. And, and yes, that voice of reason, uh, when things are happening, it's like, all right, guys. Everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. Yeah. So thank you so <laughs> much for, for your guidance, your support, um, and just really just moving us forward in a very calm and peaceful way. And I've sat here sometimes and have said, I think I told you, I was like, wow, we're so polite to each other. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's true. And I think we will build that. Um, and each person that sits in where Whitney is right now has just composed himself such in a beautiful, respectful way for it with everyone here. So, um, and you will be missed. So thank you. Well, thank you, Chuck, for your leadership. Definitely appreciate it. You ran a great race. And so, you know, um, I've enjoyed working on the finance committee with you and us having our breakouts and really being able to get to an answer really quick. And I also appreciate your forthrightness, right? Even though you may be easy going, when you have to make a point, you make your point, right? So you don't mince words about that. So it's definitely appreciated. Um, and I wish you well in your endeavors. I know you've ran a good race, so <laughs> good luck in the future. Is your next post public? It was noted in a meeting, so we know that um, Chuck will con <clears throat> continue to serve the great city of New Rochelle as a planning board member. Oh, so, nice. so yeah. thank goodness for that, right? Any of you bring I like that. Board, I will accuse myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because of conflicts of interest. I like that. So interesting okay. enough, I, I was there before I came. Here, so now you're going over there. You have to hear. So look at that. It seems like it's it's a logical next step. I'd like to thank all of you. Um, it's been a pleasure. I mean, I want to especially thank Tom and Jean mm. and Jessica. Um, you know, it's been you got. It, I think the, the the whole staff and Tom and Jean and Jessica and predecessors um, just made it uh, very easy to do what we do. Uh, and have been tremendous partners, especially I've played a, you know, uh, a, a role in the budgeting process over the years, and that's an intense process. And you all made it really easy, uh, really transparent, really thoughtful, um, and uh, I appreciate that. And I think, you know, this this group of people, as it's composed today, in prior years, is a unique group. Um, I think the, you know, the support that the voters of the city of New Rochelle have consistently shown, you know, this institution, this group of people, the support financially uh, is, I think, a testament to the unique work that happens here in the, you know, I would, I would, I don't want to be political because we're not supposed to be political, but I think, you know, like you go to the Guardian Gala and you look at the group of people assembled, that's a, that's a really nice cross section of our city. And I think mm -hmm. this is a unique place in that way. I think it's board you know, we play a small role in, the, in that, um, you know, the, the staff and, and Tom and the whole uh, organization really drive that. But, um, you know, for the small part that I've been able to play, I, I enjoyed it. And um, I look forward to watching the continued success of all of you and the library in the future. So, thank you. Um, we can just tie them up in that. I know. Well, <laughs> actually, that was I my next. That's what that that's that's what I was just, just about to say is that we will like buildings and grounds, which we have croc, which in, includes people from the community. We we do intend to um, and Deirdre, you know, helped with personnel, yeah, right? Going as she left uh, last year, and we we are gonna suck Chuck back in. Thank you. Yes, we would love to. Um, we would love that and appreciate it, and we'll make good use of your time. We promise. Um, so with that, um, it's time to adjourn. Don't be sad. Um, <laughs> can I, can I, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Can I get a second? I'll second the motion. Okay. <laughs> yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great meetings adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.